When I talk about this, remember, I'm all about authenticity. That's why I love Goodfellas and Donnie Brasco. And of course, I love the Gotti 1996 with Armand DeSante because they're so authentic. You know, they're done so well. Anything that comes off like that, I love. You know, when mine comes out, you know, when that happens, what you are going to see is authenticity. That much, uh, I guarantee. Hey everybody, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody's doing well. All is very good, very blessed on this end. And as always, we give all the praise, honor, and glory, and thanks to God for that. Today, what am I gonna do? I got a little story about Sly Stallone. A couple of years back, there was a, a fella here that uh, has a big production company. They were doing a film on Greg Scarpa, and Stallone was gonna be casted to play Greg Scarpa. So the guy calls me up, I know him well, I'm not gonna mention his name now, and he says, Mike, we need you to come in as a consultant, we want you to talk to Sly, we want you to tell him, because you knew Greg pretty well, and just, you know, be a consultant on the whole story. I said, sure. He said, I'm going to set up an appointment for you and Sly to get together. I said, great, let's do it. You know, I'm willing to help. Well, he calls me back about a week later and he says, Sly doesn't want to get, you know, in a meeting with you. And I said, well, why not? He said, well, he's afraid. I said, well, what is he afraid of? He said, well, supposedly there was some incident with your father at one point in time and Sly got scared and, you know, he's kind of afraid. I said, well, what does that have to do with me? I said, there's nothing to be afraid of. I kind of laughed about it. But anyway, it never happened and neither did the film ever happen. So I don't know if Sly backed off. I don't know what happened. You know, this is Hollywood. Crazy things happen. But just thought I'd throw that little story in. But what I really want to talk about is his new TV series called The King of Tulsa. And uh, episode one, I think, just went up uh, a couple of days ago, and I happen to watch it. And I want to give you my opinion of it, because as you know, I have a television series uh, being based upon my life that right now is in development. And you'll hear an announcement about that within the next two, three months, I think. We're getting very, very close uh, to that thing becoming a reality. We've been working on it for uh, just about two and a half years now, developing it. Very happy with the material that, that I've seen so far. It's good. And obviously, I'm a consultant, and I'm involved in the way I'm involved. Let's get back to this. You know, it was written by two guys uh, that are very, very well respected. Terrence Winter is one of them. He's done a lot with The Sopranos and so on and so forth. He's a great writer. And it's a good production team. And of course, Sly. And Sly is great in just about everything, right? Everybody in this industry, all good actors have had, you know, a show or two that they're not really proud of. And, you know, I guess Sly has the same thing. But let's talk about this specifically. Here's the plot or here's the story. Sly plays a, a mob guy, a maid guy, by the way, out of New York, and uh, he does a 25-year prison bid. Uh, he's being released from prison after 25 years. He kept his mouth shut. You know, he never squealed on anybody, didn't snitch. And so he gets out of prison, and he's being driven back to New York, and uh, he's going to meet with the guys that he hasn't seen in a while. And they seem to all be the same guys that are there after 25 years. He walks into the room, the boss is there, a couple of captains are there, who knows who they all are. But he sits down and he meets them for the first time, allegedly after 25 years, because he did a 25-year bid. How the same guys are there, I don't know. But the boss is old, he's sitting across the table, Sly sits down, and uh, it's not a real warm reception. Now, let me tell you what's wrong with this. If he got out after 25 years, obviously he's on parole, okay? You always have parole or some kind of paper. So first he'd have to report to his probation officer. Well, the smartest thing to do would not to be right out in the open, go and meet with another 10 or 15 mob guys. That's a violation. But, you know, and we listen, when I talk about this, remember, I'm all about authenticity. And when I see something that's a little, uh, you know, corny or whatever, it bothers me. I can't help it. That's how I look at it. That's why I love Goodfellas and Donnie Brasco. And, of course, I love the Gotti 1996 with Armand DeSante because they're so authentic. You know, they've done so well. Anything that... Uh, uh, that, that comes off like that, I love. So anyway, he's in the room with everybody and they're not giving him a very warm reception. Now here's a guy that allegedly did 25 years, kept his mouth shut. He's a made guy. You think they would take care of him the right way, but they're being kind of mean to him, kind of rude, kind of nasty. They're not giving him much uh, deference. And the bottom line is they want him to leave New York and go out to Oklahoma. 
And they tell him Oklahoma is virgin territory. Of course it is. There's not really any mob guys out in Oklahoma. They have nothing to say about Oklahoma. They send them out there. Why they picked Oklahoma? Well, you know, when you do these shows, you got to come up with a different, you know, twist of it because a lot of mob stuff has been done. So the twist on this, or the take on this, I should say, is that he's in Oklahoma, kind of virgin territory. Now, while he's in the room, and they're not being really nice to him. He gets into a little argument with another made guy, and Stallone hits him. He knocks out a made guy. Now, right there, he would have been dead. It would have been all over. But somehow Stallone says, okay, or they say okay, and he leaves and he goes to Tulsa. And while he's there, he meets a taxi cab driver. The taxi driver brings him to a CBD place, right? He doesn't know anything about Oklahoma. It's his first time there. And he walks into this uh, CBD pot marijuana place. It's legal now, you know, at least on the state level. And he starts to shake him down immediately. This is what he does. He's shaking a guy down. He brings the owner in the back. He's got a safe there with a half a million bucks in it, supposedly something like that. And he's shaking the guy down. I think he hits the guy. I don't remember. I'm not sure if he hit him in this one. But uh, he takes a piece of the money. He says, I'm going to protect you. Just like that. Now, I got to tell you, this is corny stuff. This is not the way it really happens. And uh, so I'm kind of laughing my way through it. Now, please, this was only episode one. It could get better. It could pick up. Things could happen. I don't know. And look, Sly Stallone, who am I? He's a great actor. He's got a tremendous career and a tremendous history. And maybe this will get better. It'll pick up. But from the first scene, uh, from the first episode, I should say, not too good. Then we see him, you know, after that, he gets involved. He's got money right away. He's taking this guy's money. He's going to show him now how to wash the money, which is really kind of silly at this point in time. You know, Stallone is telling him how he should wash the money. It's, 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 I'm not going to get into all the dialogue, but it's kind of silly. And then he goes to a club and he starts to shake down the guy at the club, you know. So it's all like the kind of mob stuff that you would see, except that it's not realistic. I don't know where this is going. I'm assuming people will like it because... You know, Stallone has a great following, and he's good in almost anything that he does. But the storyline here, it's, it's not really working for me, people. And when you compare it to The Sopranos, or you compare it to Boardwalk Empire, or uh, some of the other great mob shows out there, I, I guess those are the two that stand out at this point in time. Uh, I don't know. I'm struggling with this one a little bit. But like I said, it is Stallone. It was only the first episode. Great writer in Terrence Winter. Maybe it was just the first episode that, you know, he had to introduce it. Maybe it'll pick up and get a little better. But uh, at this point in time, I got to say, I'm not impressed. Uh, I don't know. But uh, we'll see. So catch it. King of Tulsa with Stallone. Uh, let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. You know, I'd love to see what you have to say. But I will tell you this. You know, when mine comes out, you know, when that happens, and it could be in the next, you know, couple of months, could be next year, you never know in this crazy industry, you know, it's, it's a lot of crazy things happen, but uh, what you are going to see is authenticity, that much uh, I guarantee. So that's it for today, I'm not going to get into it any further, I'm going to continue to watch this, and I'll continue to review it, and then I'd like to see what all of you had to say, but if you haven't seen the first episode, watch it, and then we'll talk about it again, I want to see your comments. So that's it for today. We got a quick one, okay? And how do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless every one of you. And yes, I'll see you next time.